Today, inshallah, the subject of my khutbah is deen wa dunya. Every Nabi came in this world for only one reason. And the reason was to let us know about the world we all will face after this life. To make us aware of the life after this life. To make us aware, to get ready because this dunya is just a transition. This is not your final destiny. This is not your final place. You are here just for a very short while. So live this life like a traveler. And get ready because your status of that life will depend on your actions of this life. And our deen wants us to live this life in a very light mode that we don't have too much burden on ourselves. We live life which is happy life that our eyes are on the life of hereafter. Our life becomes overwhelmed and burdened when we go away from our deen. And that is the reminder, inshallah, today that I want to talk that our deen is not for Rahbaniyat. Our deen doesn't allow us to go away from this dunya and live in jungle or just confine yourself to masjid. But our deen wants us to live this life, but live this life according to the divine guidance given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you will be happy in this life and even more happier when you will depart from this dunya and you will be away from all the calamities of this dunya like depression, worries, huzun, fear as long as you follow the deen. Rabbi bin Amir know, when he was in the castle of Rustam and when Rustam asked Rabbi bin Amir know, why you came here? You people of desert, you people uncivilized, why you are, what, what, you are, what you are doing here coming to this civilized nation? And what is the teaching of your prophet? If you remember three answers of Rabbi bin Amir, all those three answers have only one message is to free ourselves from the chains and shackles of this dunya and to provide us the true freedom the true freedom so that we can live this life as a happy life and we are ready to face the next life the first answer Rabbi bin Amir says to Rustam that our Prophet wants us to free ourselves from all the false gods and give ourselves in the slavery of one true God. I know when I say this, it sounds very easy, but let's look at our life. Most of the time I have seen movements, they want freedom from the religion. But brothers and sisters, we as a Muslim, we have to understand freedom from religion means that you are giving yourself in the slavery of other human beings. And other human beings are here to exploit your needs, exploit your emotions, exploit your life and take advantage of it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from all that. I know today we don't make any idols the true idols like we don't make idols with with mud we don't have any idols statues but we do have many idols if we look around our life that we have made many idols idols of career idols of standard of life idol of what other people will say 
We don't live our life. We live our life for other people. We are more worried about other people than ourselves. What other people will say if I will do this? Log kya kehenge? What people will say if I will not do this? This is another idol. There is another idol. We try to make people happy and then we try to keep them happy. This is another idol that we make in this dunya for ourselves. My brothers and my sisters. So the first answer of Rabbi bin Amir is to free yourself. Live your life. Wallahi, once you are on that station that you don't care what people will think about you. You are not worried about making people happy. Rather, you are more worried about making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. That will be the station of true freedom from all the false gods. The second answer of Rabbi bin Amir that our Nabi has come to show us the narrowness of this dunya and introduce us with the wideness of the akhirah. Khairun wa abqa. The life which is better and everlasting. Here I want to share with you two concepts. In this life, my brothers and my sisters, sometimes we work so hard for certain things that there was no need to work that hard. We exhaust ourselves. We lose the focus of Akhirah. We work so hard that we don't even care about our family. We don't even care about our religion. We don't even care about our health. And end of the day, when we look back, we realize that there was no need for me to work that hard. This life was just about going from point A to point B. And I may have lived this life in a very light mode without having so much burden on my shoulders. And why did I do what I did? The second concept. There are certain things in life we feel like that if I will not achieve this, this is a life and death situation. If I will not achieve this, that means this is end of my life. But once you pass that point, you realize that that thing was not that important. And I was thinking it's a life and death situation, but truly it was not that important. Child is insisting about something, a little toy, because that little toy is everything for him, for his life. That if he will not get that toy, that that's end of the life. Same concept as we grow, the name of our toy changes. The name of our toy changes from that little child's toy, it changes to career, it changes to business, it changes to bank balance, it changes to having a mansion in this dunya. It changes but the same concept, my brothers and my sisters. But let me tell you one thing. When you and me, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, when you and me will go close to our death time and we will look back, Wallahi, most of us we will regret. Most of us we will regret that the work I did, I worked so hard, there was no need for me to work that hard. The things in this life that I was thinking that I cannot live without it, end of the day, those things were not that important. My brothers, you know, world is changing. There was a time when the world was for takasur, al haqumut takasur, hatta zurtumul maqabir, was for more and more and more. Accumulate as much as you can, get more as much as you can, no matter how, no matter what. But the now world is going towards minimalism. You all might have heard this term that from takasur, endless.
accumulation of things and wealth, people have realized by accumulating objects, you cannot attain the true happiness. So now the world is changing, going towards minimalism. Then let's have a life, what minimum is required to live this life as a happy life. They are not Muslim, but they have realized and they have got the same concept what our religion gives us, my brothers and my sisters, because the mindset of takasur, accumulating as much as possible, makes you greedy, makes you selfish, makes you self-centered, makes you unhappy no matter what you get, because that is the very nature of desires. Any desire you will have in this world, there is only two outcomes. The first outcome is, once you will attain that desire, the next desire is ready for you to attract. And the second outcome is, that if you will not get the desire, then you will get angry and you will get sad. That is the true nature of the desires. So that is the mentality, mindset of Takasur. On the other hand, the mindset of minimalism, that live your life, whatever is minimum required to go from point A to point B, gives you more contained heart, heart with Qanaat, heart that you are more watchful and careful of about other people. You have sympathy, you, you want to make sure you address the needs of other people. You are not just self-centered. You are not just thinking about yourself. And that minimalism concept, that whatever minimum is needed for this life, will keep you contained and happy. Will keep, because you are not in the race of one thing after the other, one thing after the other. Rather, you have put pause on your life and you can reflect that where exactly I should go. Today, you know, I see most of us are unhappy. If you do survey of any community, rich or poor, your USA or Pakistan or Saudi Arabia, you will see 99% people, they are unhappy. They are not satisfied. They don't feel like that they have really achieved in life what they are supposed to achieve. And I want to give you a few tips about that. Number one, my brothers, number one reason of our unhappiness is our ungratefulness. We are na shukre. We are unthankful of the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And this social media, because what you see on the screen, it seems like that other side of the grass is green. Is social media has made everybody think that I am the poorest of the world. And everybody else got everything they needed. They are the most happy people. Look at them. They are traveling from here to there. Look at their life, how happy they are. Look at my misery. So everybody, because of social media, looks at his glass as half empty. He never looks at his glass as half full, rather he looks as half empty. So this social media has created this vacuum in our life, which has also made us more unthankful of the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. The second reason I will give you, because we are so consumed in this dunya that we have forgotten about our relationships. We don't even care about our relationships anymore. Because for us, the more, most important thing is mighty dollar. Oldest study of Harvard University which I may have shared with you. People who can really and truly live happy life on this planet are the people they have good family relationship. Good family relationship. We are, I traveled to Pakistan, I have seen this journey towards worst in last 20-25 years. 
that there are not many people they are really truly connected with in brotherly and sisterly you know relationship that they are close to each other everybody is on their own and wants to have a solo flight doesn't care about anybody around them so if we want truly the life of happiness my brothers and my sisters we have to make sure that we take care of our relationship you know our religion al islam is such a beautiful religion as i said in the beginning of my khud our our deen wants us to live life with least burden on our back live this life in a very light mode live this life so that you will be happy in this dunya and you will be happy in the life hereafter this deen which is the most precious deen that allah subhanahu wa taala has given us that we don't value we have the diamond we don't value we have the book of allah subhanahu wa taala which is the only book on this planet to guide us it took 6000 years my brother 6000 years for allah subhanahu wa taala to reveal this aya al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al islam deena it took 6000 year for humanity to grow spiritually physically mentally then allah can reveal this aya that i am completing my neema on you today and i have chosen deen al islam for you and this aya of quran inna nahnu nazzalna zikra wa inna lahu lahafizun this aya allah never revealed in any holy book before it took 6000 years when allah is revealing this aya that i am not only protecting the book that i have sent you the message al quran i am also going to protect the life of the role model for you for the rest of the life prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so allah promised not the not only the protection of the quran which we have in our hand allah protected the life of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he can become role model for us and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the only human being on this planet for whom allah subhanahu wa taala has removed this separation of private life and public life allah made prophet's bedroom life as a public life for you and me so that he can be our role model when allah has given us such a beautiful deen then how that as a muslim we will be unhappy unthankful i just want to give you one aspect of this deen you know when we talk about interest hoozri sood lot of time we feel like you know sood is about just getting 2% giving 2% 3% this person more on whatever loan you take let me give you a little introduction sood interest my brother is not just about giving more money or taking more money on the loan it's a mindset it's a approach it's your paradigm about life because the person who is involved in interest is is basically that person has certain qualities that you should know that mentality that mindset is the mindset of accumulation that's a mindset of taking advantage from the needs of the people that is the mindset to recruit agents so they can market your product your ideas to make people buy things they don't need there is a word called israf people will spend money on things which are halal more than what they should and tabzeer people will buy because of the advert advertisement and temptation things which are haram which are not allowed in this deen on top of that my brothers and my sisters this mentality of sood because of this will create unnecessary competition in the society 
people will get jealous from each other imagine if you see a person that you know that he has taken advantage from your needs he has exploited your needs and he has put you down you are going to create develop hate against that person that hate unhappiness and always we are on a mode to accumulate more that's the mentality of the person or the society or the community which is based on interest and look at our religion our religion has totally different mindset the mindset of brotherhood mindset of helping each other mindset of giving shoulder to each other mindset if the brother or sister is in need then i should move forward to help it's a totally different mindset my brothers and my sisters imagine the contrast of the people who live in a society with the mindset of interest and the society with islamic values of brotherhood and sisterhood like prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has developed you know in madina so it's not just about money it's just a different culture it's a totally different culture totally different mindset totally different approach that's why soothe interest is the only thing not adultery not you know any other thing any other sin even shirk allah has not declared war against anybody except one thing which is riba that's why hazrat umar says even stay away from the dust from the dust of riba dust of riba may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq brothers and my sisters i will conclude with one thing wallahi there is a day coming there is a day coming for you and me sooner or later that day on the poorest of the poor of this umma on the poorest of the poor of this umma the pharaoh of yesterday he will admire he will have hasra he will have hasra i wish that i i am on his place i have the iman i had the iman of this person the poorest of the poor person will be better than the pharaoh of yesterday at that time is coming as long as we believe and we hold on to our religion that's why one of our sheikh he says protect your iman protect your iman up until you reach to your grave Allah.